A little bit of a workshop to put the cameras, these $7,000 Panasonic cameras, into the cradles. Thanks, guys. studio grid 
-hmm. They're like in control. It's a little higher. Mm -hmm. We don't have this here. So um, the emphasis mm -hmm. has been on fluorescent lighting mm -hmm. because it's cool. Mm -hmm. Not only is it cool, um, especially in you having a kind of news of talk environment, mm -hmm. you might want to get the lights close to people. Mm -hmm. You don't want the makeup to run, you don't want to feel that sweating under the heat. So the fluorescent lens itself significantly better. And those cameras are able to adjust the fluorescent lighting. And in addition to adjusting the fluorescent lighting, you now have a wider range of quality fluorescent lights which are close to white. Mm. So the great thing about that is, you guys lose a bulb, you don't have to go buy an $800 bulb. Mm. You can go to Costco. Mm -hmm. But make sure that you're buying the pure right, the same numbers you see on here. Right. Okay? When we talk about white balancing a camera, who understands what that is? Yeah. So I'm gonna put you on the hook. What does that mean? That's to match the colors up with uh, what's true white. Okay, so and why would that be matching the colors? Um, because you can make the colors look a bit weird, I guess. No, white is white to match all the colors because white has equal amounts of red and green. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which are the colors. So we use a white. Um, so now, it's you know, battery. this one has the same thing in here. If you set those to the same numbers, then they all communicate. Oh. Um, no. So if I said this and that to the same numbers, yeah. you guys are talking, the receiver is picking both of you. Oh, that's great. Where is the numbers? It's, it's in here. There are two numbers. You can pick a frequency. Okay, you set them to the same. Now, there are about 100 variations oh, in here. Okay. So we could also have, if you, if I, like I believe, I think you guys have two sets of those. So you could put all four on the same receiver. Oh, that's mm. awesome. okay. Or you could put them on different receivers. Mm. Okay? That's good. So now, what happens with this unit here? Okay? And what you say comes directly, and we use a different line from here. But does this have an XLR out to the camera? Well, we can get you an XLR out. Okay. okay, so I'm just looking at those little things that I want them to All right. be my part. So I'm going to take an XLR out into here. Yeah. Alternatively, alternatively, we may want to take this directly into the soundboard. Mm. Oh, you uh, can do that. Okay. So, so, so it's going to be part of your workflow, how you guys decide you want to do it. We it's, mean take what into the side? So the instead of taking this yeah. into the camera, and have the audio. Yeah. Oh, go to the camera. It goes to the. I I, I would I would think that. The audio goes straight to the board. I I would think that I might audio. want to take the audio straight to the board. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, so okay, because it gives them clear. some flexibility in that room of mixing. Okay. Control it. Okay. So it basically, the XLR we should still have it for the camera. Well, I'm just I'm just saying just in case we're doing it in an outside the field. Yes, right. that's true. You're correct. But come over here. Come over here. Uh, no, no, I'm just uh, saying. No, 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 no. He's, he's got a valid point. If uh, I said if <laughs> it was a mic input, so the same XLR which you might use in here yeah. might work for the camera. Okay. Okay. No, that's what I'm saying is. What, I want I want to use the same mics with a smaller camera, like the uh, the Canon. Oh, I see. just use the, uh, the mics. I'm not telling yeah. about the seven thousand. Yeah, if you have smaller cameras with, a, with yeah. an input, yeah, I'd still be able to use. Yeah. I've yeah. done about that camera there. Right? Okay, so yeah. let me put my glasses on. Small mic. Okay. Okay. okay the, you know, so really the pickup is clean. Yeah. Because when somebody's talking, you don't have to worry about uh, how close you are to get this. Okay. Um, I'll have to check the equipment as soon as you see how many of those we have really ordered. Okay. okay? So you could have four of those all yeah. on the same. Time. Better to turn off the power from the mic, the headphones? No, you don't have to. It's the power. So this one? It might be that blue button. Yeah. There's another button. Oh. I think you just have to pull out the battery. This unit over here runs on the bottom left computer, and this is a quality control. 
It is our waveform monitor, vector scope, and I will give a little guide. Uh, Tomorrow we'll have a little handout uh, on, on what is where. It's a waveform monitor, vector scope, audio monitoring to tell us the quality of the picture which is going out. At this station here is a desktop unit. This is where we will be grabbing video which we are saving to a storage which will be edited. Okay, so as I said, there are no tape machines involved in here. It's all a digital workflow. Everything we, we're doing for capture will be done through here, and it will be saved. When we come to edit, we have our choices right now. On here, we have, um, we can edit either in Synergy, or we can use this desktop where we have a license for CS6. Okay? At some point, if you desire, we can take your final cut stations okay. and give them access to that storage. Yeah. So you decide how you want to compartmentalize that. Because I would think right off the bat, it's not a good idea to have the stuff we, ca we have here and this final cut material you have. I, I really don't know. So, so you, you, well, you, you as the person who knows what you're editing here, yeah. where it's coming from, tell me what space you want on this unit so you can see it. Okay. If I was to click on my computer here, uh, and this is making a liar out of me because... <laughs> now, okay. If I was to click on my computer here, sorry, this one should not have it because this is the only available one. Okay. You will see audio, graphics, Rogers transfers, and media. Those are the same ones we saw over there. Okay, guys? Yeah. So those are showing up as network drives. Oh, if I come over here, the same ones, they, they disconnect when they're inactive, the same drives, are showing up here. Okay. Okay? Sorry. So the same four drives, which we saw at the back as, as folders, are here, are here, so they can be on all the machines if we want. Okay. Because it's not a networked operation. So when I have media on that folder, I can see the media here, I can see the media here, and if you guys want to see it on the final cut, I can put the media there yeah. also. I mean the future, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Do you have a, uh, any suggestions or any preferences, or do you know? Well, as I see how you work? guys work, the stuff you have on the final cut, where is that coming from right now? It's uh, got filled. It's filled stuff. It's what? It's all filled stuff. But wouldn't the filled stuff be mixed? End up going to Rogers also with your programming from here? No. Yeah, you, well, that's really. separate programming. Yeah, there's not they're individual pieces. They're not. Um, like they're individual mostly projects. For, um, they get posted on, they're like webisodes. Oh, because so it's, so it's a website. Yeah. The only well, thing well, I can see is like an introduction happening. Yeah. And then okay, you guys might do intros there. But the other thing too is like we have all the space there. Do you archive your web yeah. stuff? No. Only on YouTube, they're locally, not, they're not, not on local. They're, they're not, not locally archived. No. Yeah. And do you have any need for that? We for, do, but do we have space to do that? that? Well, like again, we, we do have you guys got 25 terabytes <coughs> of protected space, but like I said, we, even though we have a lot of space, we want to use it wisely. Yeah.